when it comes to the BBL epidemic, I feel like we really need to stop blaming these IG models who have already gotten the surgery and these young girls for wanting to aspire to look like these IG models. We need to start blaming ourselves, you know, the ones who actively don't get the surgery. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Exis and this is my channel Exis Does where I do things and I am still on my commentary train so why would I stop? Right today we're going to talk about the BBL epidemic specifically why we the non-surgery folks who constantly have something to say about these surgery bodies are the blame for the BBL epidemic. Before we jump to conclusions and start getting, you know, Twitter fingers under my comments, let's just kind of hear me out and watch the entire video, like seriously. Oh, one of my friends made a video about Blurred Con and when I was reading her comments, one of the men who posted on there was already quick to say something about it, but had, had stated how he didn't actually watch the video yet. Let's not do that here, okay? Let's just, let's just relax, all right? So yes, we're gonna talk about the BBL, Billion Bot Lift, and the professional term to call it, and specifically the BBL epidemic that has been trending from the past couple of weeks, I believe from a TikTok that someone filmed of a bunch of people going to the DR. I think it's the DR. I, I might put the, I might put the TikTok in here. Regardless, there were a bunch of women who were going overseas to get a surgery at this country that is very well known for doing cheap surgeries, I would presume, and they were all in wheelchairs heading back home uh, from a recovery. From, from that TikTok started the BBL epidemic and a lot of people had a lot of things to say about the actual surgery, specifically people who haven't had the surgery themselves. Uh, specifically me being one of those people who hasn't had the surgery and knowing what I know now will probably never get the surgery unless I become a billionaire. So first let's start off with talking about what a BBL is. Okay, so a BBL, also known as a Brazilian butt lift, is a surgical procedure where they take the fat, usually from your stomach, and inject it in your buttocks. And why would you want this? Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, the beauty standard now is to look dummy badonk donk thick. It's to have a big old donkey booty, as Phaedra Parks would once say. Phaedra Parks walked so we all could run. I just, I just want to let you all know that. No, but like real, real talk, real talk. The beauty standard now has been to have a bull-ish enough chest, a super small waist, and a big old ginormous booty. And like, sure, there are some people who are genetically blessed to be able to partake freely in this uh, beauty standard without feeling the pressures of having to get any work done. But as us regular plebes who are not God's favorite, some of us might have considered getting some work done, specifically Brazilian butt lift. You know, I, I considered it at one point. I was interested. Um, I always told my friends that if I didn't get the dream body I wanted within the next two years, I'm looking into getting surgery. But that was back then. Knowing what I know now, probably. Probably not. I'd have to have a significant amount of financial security to consider getting a BBL. So what are, what are the pros and the cons of doing a BBL procedure? Well, I'm going to tell you with my non-medical licensed self, I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons. Again, these, these, these are just what I've noticed, what I've seen, um, what people have kind of picked up on as well. And I guess the first pro of getting a BBL is that the, the results are immediate. You do not have to work and toil away at getting the body 
of your dream in a gym and extensive, sometimes brutal dieting in order to get the body that you want. You can just go under the knife, they put you under some sort of anesthesia, I assume, and boom, you got the body of your dreams. Hashtag what waste, hashtag slim thick, hashtag dummy thick. Uh, I don't know what the kids are saying nowadays. Uh, you get your dream body almost instantly. If you have the money to do it, it is very resourceful and a lot less time consuming. Another pro is that, you know, you get the body that you desire, you know, like not everyone is built like early 2018 Doja Cat. Not everyone's built like that. Not everyone's built like Megan Thee Stallion, you know? Uh, a lot of us are, built like regular people and have different body shapes and so having that resource to be able to get the opportunity to have the body of your dreams whether it be a super tiny waist and a nice large booty you know that that it seems pretty powerful when you think about it like you can literally change your appearance like if you think about plastic surgery as a whole you have the power to change your entire appearance you no longer have to deal with the idea or concept that you have to work with what god gave you you can you can you can change that if you want to if you feel comfortable enough to do so that's that's another pro the last pro is that you don't use other foreign substances you're using your own back other substances being silicone shots when they shoot silicone up into some women's booties the backdoor alley way of doing it is that they'll shoot in cement in your butt like you you don't need all of that it's just your own fat so to an extent you get that nice looking jiggle that a lot of big silicone booty girls might not have it might be it might be good uh so now that i've talked about the pros uh, the second time i've done the video and my eye is watering what is going on let me turn off the fan okay so the cons what are the cons give me those sweet cons cons of a bbl uh the first one is that it is uh, the deadliest surgery apparently uh to date deadliest cosmetic surgery as we know apparently one in three thousand women and men i've seen men get bbls you know we're all inclusive in this joint one in three thousand people will die from this bbl surgery i don't think this is talked about enough up until recently is that this is a very rigorous dangerous surgery again you're going under the knife but a lot of it is that not a lot of doctors may have the experience needed to handle bbls especially on different bodies when i say this i mean that there is a possible chance if your doctor takes the fat out of your stomach they could possibly inject that fat uh, incorrectly into your possibly there's a possible chance that they can incorrectly inject the fat into one of the large veins of your buttocks which would instantly ruin your bloodstream possibly causing you to go into sepsis have a stroke die whatever so that is why it is incredibly important that if you do decide to get a bbl you do go to somebody well-known doctor that knows what they're doing that's expertise is bbls and knows how to work with several different body types they 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 got a, a significant amount of bbl notches on their surgery medical license belt Okay. Another con that people don't talk about is that the maintenance. I assume that they tell you this when you're about to sign the contract and when you're about to get the actual surgery done. There is a lot of maintenance that goes into getting any surgery. So, for example, if you get your tits done, if surgery doesn't look right or it looks botched or say you get into an injury you will definitely have to go back to get your tits readjusted what's stopping that same concept from a bbl if you get a brazilian butt lift surgery nine times out of ten there is a very high chance that you will have to go back and get some sort of maintenance whether it be taking more fat out uplifting your butt they don't talk about that and so i guess the, the main concern with that is <coughs> Get some water. 
her. Anyway, one of the main concerns about that is, um, which I don't think a lot of these young girls really know, and young, young people really know, is that in the next, not even 10 years, five years, do you think you will have the same amount of money needed for you to go back under the knife for any type of maintenance for your BBL surgery or for a possible botched surgery? Yeah, I, a lot of people don't really think about that. They don't really think about the idea that I, when you, I like to think of it this way. If you decide to go under the knife, you're kind of like a car, you know, you have to constantly go under to get work done. So just like you have to pay a significant amount of money to maintain a car, you probably will have to pay a significant amount of money to maintain your body now. It's not just a one and done thing. The maintenance can be costly. And so the question again is, will you have enough money to go in for a round two or a round three of a BPL if need be, which is what they really don't tell you about these types of surgeries. And I guess the uh, last con would then be possibility of looking botched. You know, I see a lot of people posting pictures and videos and retweeting videos about wanting to go to Dr. Miami. But what we don't know is that someone like a Dr. Miami might not know your body type, might not know what looks good on you, and also there might be a possibility of you looking botched. There, you get what you pay for is very on brand for these types of surgeries. If you get a anywhere between a one to five K BBL surgery, you're going to get a one to five K possibly botched up job. If you get a 10K and up BBL surgery, you're going to get a 10K and up high quality surgery job. It really, again, depends on who you go to, which is why I say a lot of people who are considering these surgeries, do you think you'll have enough money in the next 20 years or so to upkeep with it if need be? Stay woke. So with the pros and the cons of the BBL, it's easy to see and assume why people would want to get into doing this type of surgery. America is very into instant gratification. It is very on brand. And quite frankly, no matter how many squats you do, no matter how many protein shakes, hip thrusts, deadlifts, no matter how much chicken breasts you eat, um, no matter how many how many times you count your macros, you still might not look like 2018 Doja Cat, all right? It is very much so game and a gamble. You're playing with genetics. And so it might be easier to just go under the knife and get the body of your dreams instead of just constantly toiling and slaving away in the gym hoping that something will give, especially if you don't have the money for a fitness if you don't have a money for a fitness trainer then me anyway and i'm moving on but uh yeah so it, it makes sense why people would want to look into actually getting a bbl done and to getting this type of surgery what it's perceived to be is a very much so quick instant get your body now type of procedure it is not a process you go under the knife <coughs> You go under the knife looking one way and come out looking significantly different. Like brand new body. A new body who dis. Hashtag dummy thick bitch. And so like why wouldn't people want to get these surgeries done? But honestly if you look why these young girls would want to consider these type of surgeries really you can't blame these instagram models like sure it's so easy and so rich to blame the claremont twins for being a bad influence on the the youth and the teenagers of today but if you look at the claremont twins you know we all know that they they, they don't look like regular people they've gotten work done and i'm pretty sure not every young girl or man wants to look like you know the claremont twin we definitely influence people into wanting to alter their appearance we the regular folk who don't entertain surgery 
are savages and rude, especially when we're online. And therefore, I do think that we contribute significantly to the BBL epidemic. Couldn't blame the Claremont twins or the IG model with the ass bigger than Texas. But you can also blame the nasty comments somebody might leave underneath a young girl's IG post because their body might not look like a Megan Thee Stallion. The society that we live in, we live in a society has the habit of putting unrealistic bodies on pedestals and, and making them the beauty standard. Specifically with the BBL, who were the group of people that have mainstreamed the BBL surgery? I'll wait. It's the Kardashians. They are the ones. We we put them up on the pedestal. We said that they were very beautiful women and to an extent they are very good looking but like they also don't look like regular people. They don't look like you and I. They don't look like somebody who might have natural beauty or someone who just looks like an everyday person. They're very much over glamorized, over surgeried, over Botox. And not that that's a bad thing but for the longest time we put that level of beauty on a pedestal called that beauty standard whether we outwardly admitted it or not and then have the audacity to look at women sideways when they want to look like that unrealistic beauty standard uh again we probably wouldn't have such a big influx of bbls or the bbl epidemic as we know it if we didn't celebrate bbl bodies but we did and like any other cyclical beauty standard before it was bbls it was a super skinny body with the unrealistically large tits before that it was the super stick thin bodies where you borderline look like it just didn't look healthy. In the 1920s, it was attractive to look like a little a little boy. In the 1960s, it was attractive to look kind of uh, skinny and childlike. You know, we constantly put these pressures on women to adhere to these unrealistic beauty standards. And again, we have the audacity to look at them sideways for doing their best to feel like they have to adhere to them never up until recently honestly i want to say up until the last five years have we ever been very hardcore body positive and very steadfast in celebrating regular bodies of all shapes and sizes usually we celebrate the, the bodies that are part of the beauty standard i go back to the young instagram girl who might get bullied for having a squarish body type we do that regular individuals do that and in the same breath we'll celebrate kim kardashian kylie jenner or whatever great value diet look-alike version of them for looking you know pretty like, we're to blame for that so when we look at these young girls and 18 year olds who want to be like i want to get this bbl done are we really surprised we kind of coerced and manipulated them into thinking that way and another point i want to add is pertaining to surgery and this this goes out to all my like hotepi faux woke men who really want to celebrate natural beauty we only like surgeries when they look good. I'll say that one more time. We only like surgeries if they look good. Okay, let me explain. When Summer Walker had gotten her nose job, a lot of people were very, very quick to say, Oh, Summer Walker, black women need to start learning how to love themselves. They need to start loving themselves and celebrating who they are. And I don't understand why she would have gotten her nose done. However, nobody was saying the same exact thing when Summer Walker got a very well done, almost natural looking BBL. Why is that? We only celebrate surgeries that look good, okay? We will sit here and compare a celebrity, say that they have quote unquote natural beauty, not really knowing what they might have gotten done. I remember, you know, I would see people celebrate like Sandra Bullock and be like, oh, she looks so good for her age and she does, you know? But like, let's not kid ourselves and not think that she might have gotten a little 
in the face, you know? Like, she probably did. Same with the J-Lo. Nobody wants to talk about how Kelly Rowland got a nose job because Kelly Rowland's nose job looked like a regular nose. But y'all were so quick to bully and harass Summer Walker because her nose Summer Walker looks fine, she's a very pretty woman, but still, y'all will pick and choose and decide when things look acceptable and when things are seen as naturally beautiful. When it comes to who takes up the space as a natural beauty and a celebrity, we would probably say Kelly Rowland or a SZA, but we would be so quick to say that the Claremont twins look artificial and fake, kind of almost alien-like, but lo and behold, SZA and Kelly Rowland have definitely gotten surgery. And never once have we ever discussed their surgeries and ever discussed how bad they look. You know why? Because they look like normal people. So if we're gonna be honest, let's just say it with our chest, okay? It's not that y'all don't like surgery. It's that y'all don't like surgeries that don't look good, okay? If you decide to get a BBL surgery or any surgery for that matter, my honest opinion is that you need to do your research. Like you really need to do your research. You really can't be out in these streets watching like one or two vlogs from someone who went to Miami somewhere and got some work done thinking that you're gonna end up looking the same way flawless as they did. A lot of these YouTubers don't tell you is that they probably got that surgery done for free to promote the cosmetologist or the doctor that they were working under. And of course they're gonna get like the best looking surgery. But if you're just some Joe Schmo under the lab table, you might not get the best results. You know, that is why I say do your research. I have had friends who have gotten BBLs and I have friends who are interested in getting BBLs. And let me tell you, and I say that they have really fished out their doctors, they have done extensive research, and they were very clear to their doctors as to what they wanted and how they wanted to look. Not everyone wants to look like a... a strip club barbie okay a lot of people just want a natural look again i implore you do your research on what doctor might work for you and who might not work look up their death count see how many deaths they have under their belt i'm sure there are more than enough websites that can offer that service for how many botched surgeries or fatalities that they have done understand the stakes at hand going back to the beginning of this video in the next five years do you think you can afford a round two of a bbl surgery do you think you can afford not another 5k but at least another 10k and up if the answer is no or if the answer is oh well i'll just put it on a credit don't do it like Please, just don't, because you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you end up looking botched and you don't have the means to fix it. Unless you want to look botched, then that's on you. Understand the stakes at hand, understand how much money you're putting into, understand the maintenance. Do not go to an overseas doctor without again doing your research. My personal opinion, even though I haven't gotten any work done if the surgery is 5k and below and it's from some back alley surgeon out in the dominican republic somewhere um maybe reconsider your options the bbl surgery is a fairly new surgery it is not like a boob lift or a breast implant you don't know what you're getting and again we don't know what it will look like in the next 10 to 20 years or so like yeah you could use the kardashians or you can use someone like Nicki minaj if she even got a view did Nicki minaj get a view i don't even know yeah you can use people like that or bernice burgo who have got who have gotten BBLs over time and have upkept it, but that's the catch 22, is that they had the means and the money to upkeep their surgery. If the Kardashians weren't the Kardashians, do you think Kim would be able to upkeep her, her, her appearances? Like, do you think Kim would be able to upkeep the, the BBLs and the Botox and all of that?
exactly somewhere along the line there was probably a botch that happened so she probably paid a significant amount of money to get fixed and my thing is is that if you don't have that type of money or those type of resources or you don't know if you'll have that type of money and resources within the next like five years or so then you really need to reconsider your options if you are 18 and watching this wait 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 a minute okay no one told me this but second puberty is a thing your body is constantly changing how i look like when i was 17 or 18 shit, how i look like when i was 20 versus how i look like now outside of like it like working out in the gym somehow i just grew an ass like i did and, and titties like i don't know where they came from because like in 2014 that wasn't the thing okay like just wait a minute all right and really wait a minute because we don't even know in the next five to ten years or so if bbls are going to be the next beauty standard who knows we might do a full 360 back to the twiggy style and everybody being super skinny uh you just you you need to wait all right you really need to wait and reassess things please don't if you're young jump to getting surgery because there is a fair chance that you won't know how it's gonna look in the next five to ten years because of your body changing and there isn't enough evidence to show how it will look in the next five to ten years because your body has changed and if you're spending 1k on a bbl like girl just just get finished trainer. like it's not worth it child but anyway adhering to unrealistic beauty standards suck and shaming young girls for wanting to look this way or shaming instagram models for who already do look this way does nobody any good because it's so easy for us to sit there and preach like don't get this don't get that done it's not good for you but people don't care when they're desperate about changing their appearance and when they're dealing with some deep-rooted insecurities of their own I implore that if you have deep-seated body issues that you seek therapy first before considering any type of body development. I also will state and I guess end this video off by saying that if you do get the, the surgery or if you get any work done or say you lose a significant amount of weight or even if you naturally get the body of your dream, it, your problems won't be solved. Like sure, people will look at you differently, definitely. But as far as those deep-seated insecurities that you probably need to handle and assess with therapy, those won't be solved unless you do the work yourself. So I guess TLDR, learn how to love yourself and us as a unit who have so much to say about women who wanna get this surgery done, we should still constantly warn people about the dangers but also how to give people grace. Don't sit here and shame girls for wanting to get this procedure done or shame anyone who has gotten the procedure done. We don't know what people are going through. It's so much for us to sit here and say to love the natural skin that we're in when half of the people we idolize and celebrate that are all natural have probably gotten work done themselves. So with that said, if you liked my video, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to like comment down below your opinions of the bbl i would love to hear it tell me if you think that we are to blame for the bbl epidemic or do you think that the ig models or the young girls are to blame um i'd love to hear it i'd like to have conversations with you guys down below you guys had a great time and i hope to see you next time i said time twice okay goodbye <laughs>